Welcome. Well, you are at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family. And we're so delighted that you've welcomed us into your home. Now, we would love to hear from you, so send us an email with a question or a comment to Jim and Joy at EWTN. Dot com where we'd like to wish you all a happy St. Valentine's mm -hmm. Day. And we say, St. Valentine, pray for us mm -hmm. that we would all be filled with true love, right? Absolutely. True love, not true love, love that God. uses, but love the way that God has designed us to love. And there's that great song, you know, what the world needs now is love, sweet love, right? We all need love, true love. We need agape. We love, need agape as love. Well as the other real, real love. love. Well, so this Valentine's, you know, what we've done in the past, uh, we have four children. And so sometimes we, um, you know, they needed a break. And so we asked them, we said, well, what can we do to help you in your marriage? Because we wanted to be given. married with children. Right? right. We wanted to prefer them other than ourselves. And so uh, we went from the oldest to the youngest and we would keep their children. So we kept their children mm. and they had a couple's getaway weekend, which he even bankrolled. Is he the best dad in the world? <laughs> and then we would keep the kids. And it was just a really special time. So then we rotated out of that, and Jim said, I want to do Valentine's. I want to have that Valentine's back for us. Mm. So, but then this year, we're going to have um, our grandchildren are coming this weekend. Our daughter, Anna, who's married to NATO, he turns 40, and she asked a couple of months ago if she, we could watch the kids that yeah. weekend and stuff. And so we're going to do that. And their oldest sister, Gabby, who's in college, she's going to come. She wants to come and spend some time with us. It's really fun when your grandchildren. Johnny, I didn't know any of this. When you knew that. When your grandchildren call you up and say, Nona, can I come and play? But she did have one request. Request. She yeah. said, are you going to make pasta and meatballs? I said, I will. So That's how you we're going to have moment. pasta and meatballs. I don't care. Just come to my house. Yeah. I'll cook. Yeah. And so we're going to have them. And. And in NATO, we'll have a beautiful yeah. time away. It's and beautiful. So it's a good thing to do. Yeah, we pray that everybody would have a blessed Valentine's Day, Saint Valentine's Day, Saint, holy. It'll be a holy time. If you look deeply in your loved one's eyes and express love, whether you're a married couple or to others, just expressing the agape, the unconditional love of God. So Rachel. Ullman is back with us. We're going to have a couple of sisters yes. with the given ministry. We spoke mm -hmm. about that on Wednesday. Incredibly powerful. Yes. So Sister Augusta and Sister, um, what's that? Martinez. Martinez, okay. But they're both with the Dominican yeah. sisters yeah. of St. Cecilia. And these beautiful sisters yeah. are going to be here. And, and talk about. I had Michaela. That's it. That's what I, I was looking at Michaela. Uh-huh. Okay. okay, Sister Michaela Augusta Martinez. Augusta and Michaela, yeah. Martinez, who are the Dominican sisters of St. Yeah. Cecilia. Yeah. And they're going to be talking about um, Given Institute, what that has done for them, for women who have a calling, right? So um, every we have woman, that Every woman has a calling. Every woman has a mm -hmm. calling, and it's just directing. Is it to marriage? Is it to ministry? Is it to religious life? What is God calling you to? What is the purpose yeah. for which you were born? And one of the things that we do for our grandchildren, when it's their birthday, we always send them a birthday card with the, this little card in it. It says, um, you were made by God to know him, to love him, to serve him, right? And so then catechism. so that you would know the purpose to which you were born on their birthday. So, so they're asking God, what's the purpose of which am I born? Whether mm -hmm. I'm five or six, we want to know well, it. We're going to come back and, and learn more about how women are given a special gift and they're meant to give it away. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Welcome back. Well, you're at home with Jim and Joy, and today I bring you three beautiful ladies. Mm -hmm. We have Rachel Harkins Ullman with us, who is the executive director of the Given Institute, Sister Augusta and Sister Michaela, both who are Dominican sisters of St. Cecilia. Now, you can go to their beautiful website. It's GivenInstitute.com or NashvilleDominican.org 
that's where these sisters are. So um, we just want to welcome them to at home. We're delighted to have you. But beautiful sisters, we want you first to tell our family a little bit about yourselves, where you were born, where you're from, and all that kind of stuff, and then we'll go off to Given. Okay. I am from Texas originally. I am one of four siblings, and I met the Nashville Dominicans for the first time through my grandmother and then met them in person when I was in college. I felt the call to follow the Lord in a semester abroad in mm -hmm. Rome, so that desire to be a woman in the heart of the church, mm -hmm. and the Lord show, showed me that I could do that through the religious life. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good. I'm Sister Augusta, and I grew up in the Archdiocese of Denver, um, and my family moved there right after Pope John Paul II had visited for World Youth Day in 1993 had a transformative impact on my own mother's life. Mm -hmm. um, and I say that all my years growing up, the various catechists, the priests, my own parents, they had heard that call to, mm -hmm. to respond, to be the church of today. Um, and so I was really privileged to grow up in a time and in a place that had known the impact of a saint. Mm -hmm. um, and so to be inspired myself. So like Sister Michaela, I met the sisters in college um, and joined just halfway halfway through college. Sister and I actually entered our community the same year. Oh, fun. Oh. Good. We are in our, our 14th year of religious life, mm -hmm. and it's been a beautiful adventure. Wonderful. Beautiful. Thank Welcome. you so much for Thank being with you. us. Thank <laughs> you. Well, on Wednesday, we shared in great detail about given. Yes. And one of the things I notice in, in what you promote, you speak about the pillars yes. of given. Share with us. Yes. Yeah. Well, we have three pillars because we originally told you about our mission statement being to activate the gifts of young adult women for the church and for the world. And we believe we do that through three themes, three pillars. And the first is to receive the gift that you are. Secondly, to realize the gifts you've been given. And then thirdly, to respond with the gift that only you can give. And we do that through three major facets, faith formation, leadership training, and dedicated mentoring. And I invited the sisters to join us today because they are a part of a beautiful array of women who serve as mentors for the young adults at the Given Forum. And the Dominican sisters, among many different congregations, were our, found, our foundresses. Mm -hmm. They founded the inaugural Given Forum in 2016. I even myself, I was educated by Nashville Dominicans in high school. Okay. And so I have a fond love for mm -hmm. the Dominican sisters. But I know, for me, that was one of my greatest uh, conversion moments towards the Lord and giving my heart and my love to Him was because of their beautiful witness of joy in that unity with Christ and being a bride of Christ was so evident as a 14 year old mm -hmm. that was so impactful mm -hmm. that I got to be with them on a daily basis as my educators mm -hmm. and my formators. Beautiful. Well sister share with us how you all got involved, what you feel you bring to this, what mm -hmm. you're taking from it, what you get and so share with us your thoughts. I think in the last episode um, we heard that the Giving Conference started in the year for consecrated life. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that the Holy Father had invited us to do was to share our vocation and to share the meaning of being a consecrated woman um, with the whole church. And so we did that in a couple ways. One that stands out is um, inviting people to visit our home, to visit the convent, to pray with us. But another way that the CMSWR was able to share consecrated life was through the given conference. Mm -hmm. And the goal of the Given Conference, or one of the goals, was to show that there's a great complementarity between a woman's invitation to be a religious and a woman's invitation to, to consecrate herself to the Lord through, through married life. And so when we were able to come together at the Given Conference, there, it was a beautiful experience. It was, we all learned, the religious learning mm -hmm. from the, the lay women and mm -hmm. uh, the lay women learning from the religious. Mm -hmm. When I was at the 2016 conference, and um, both sister and I were able to help lead the prayer and the liturgies um, throughout the conference. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sister Augusta, share with us about yeah. how this has impacted your life and yeah. what you feel you bring to this. Yeah, absolutely. So as sister spoke to you in that, in that year, I think part of what came really to the forefront was the beauty that every woman is really called to the dignity of being a mother. Um, regardless of externally what acts she may engage in, whatever her vocation may be. And this is, of course, a rich, rich teaching that, again, Pope St. John Paul II helped to bring alive in the church in a new way. 
but the experience of being gathered with women of various ages. Mm -hmm. Rachel mentioned the mentors, which in the 2019 forum was a powerful witness mm -hmm. because you had lay women mm -hmm. working in a variety of different aspects of both the secular mm -hmm. and the Catholic professional worlds who came back to mentor younger women, mm -hmm. some of whom were f fresh out of college, some of whom had been in a work field, some who were wide open to what's my vocation in life, some who were already married. We had several expectant mothers, mm -hmm. um, just mm -hmm. beautiful. And then this variety of religious, living a variety of charisms within the whole of the church. Mm. And so what came to the forefront was that the common denominator is this motherhood mm -hmm. and this, um, the spiritual motherhood mm -hmm. and the place of, of woman within society. And that what she has to bring is not necessarily, again, some external work, but it begins within her very being. Mm -hmm. It's who she is. It's radically written into mm -hmm. our nature. And that regardless of what we end up going on to do, that in every encounter, the woman is able to see a person and able to nurture and able to encourage and able to provide a space for the other to flourish. Um, and so I think that the forum provided a place for women to actually do that for one another. Mm -hmm. And so you saw this mutual encouragement happening. Um, it was a powerful, yes. powerful experience. That is incredible. We've heard that before, you know, this whole idea of every woman called to be a mother. And then, mm -hmm. of course, coming from you, then it's kind of like, well, what do you mean like that? You can't be a biological mother, but right. yet mother. How would that fit into the whole professional realm? Mm -hmm. I mean, you could see if you say that, and then those who really mm -hmm. feel called to marriage, the family, mm -hmm. they get it right away. Yeah. But how does this fit into the professional realm and what people would be doing? I think it fits incredibly well and it's even more needed in the world than it is right now. And that's what we're trying to activate. So you think about women in corporate America, right? And I have a lot of uh, female friends who are leaders and their feminine genius being at that table of decision making changes the mood of the room. And it helps bring the person to the forefront, yeah. that care for the weak and vulnerable, not just looking at numbers and data, right, mm -hmm. but looking at the persons behind that. And that's so important that women are involved in these decisions in all different areas of life and all different facets. And we see that through a lot of the speakers and panelists that we invite to come to Given. We have powerhouse women <laughs> who are up there sharing with young adults what they have faced, which oftentimes has been difficult, mm -hmm. right? Yeah bringing their femininity, their maternity to these conversations and these areas of the world. We have incredible women, Gloria Purvis, who I know you know, and mm -hmm. Catherine Hadros coming this year to the 2020 conference, but women leaders are what we're all about. We're all about activating female Catholic leaders across the country. Well, you know, I think as this is so beautiful and it's so organic and it's still growing and being and becoming. Right. You know, like in the 60s, you know, women were, you know, they were stay-at-home moms, and, and they were leaving the home to go join the workforce sure. to become like men. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. and, and no, right. don't right. become like men. Bring you. <laughs> like, right. be who you are. Right. And, and I think, you know, um, how they say, you know, the, the glass ceiling, and it's all about mm -hmm. money. But it, it was all a lie. Yeah. Right. Right? Because right. you can have it all. No, you can't have it. <laughs> and that's, that's it. also yeah. why I feel so passionate that the Lord mm -hmm. called me to work for Given mm -hmm. is because I have been uh, balancing motherhood mm -hmm. and a career throughout my own profession. Mm -hmm. And so many times I had to fight for flexibility. Mm -hmm. I had to fight for my rights as a mother. Mm -hmm. And it was so beautiful to be in this ministry, in this apostolate, where my motherhood is first. Right. Mm -hmm. I am recognized as a mother first, right? Mm -hmm. And that then I am freed up to be the leader that I'm meant to be. Mm -hmm. And if we turn the table, mm -hmm. right, and we make that the truth, I want every woman who is out there to experience what I have experienced being in this role where the board of directors that I answer to, they know that I'm a mother first. Mm -hmm. And that is so important and needed in our world. And one of the things that's become more and more apparent to me as, as I just go on in life and working with people mm -hmm. is that you know, to know who you are right. and to know what you're called to do, you can discern that, you know, within yourself only so far. Mm -hmm. But somebody has to give you the gift of yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like a friend gives himself or herself. Yeah. But to really affirm somebody mm -hmm. to the ultimate, 
is not only to give you me, but to give you you. Yeah, um, so that we can say, this is what I see, this is what I'm hearing, or else we don't come into it into fullness. Right. That's what parents are doing with their children. They're giving them the gift of themselves. Right. That's what's so horrendous in our society today. Mm -hmm. It's like there are parents that are saying, I'm not going to say if they're male or female or what. Mm -hmm. They have to decide that on their own. Instead, yeah. of, instead of saying, this is already here. Mm -hmm. I want to give you this. is." Talk to mm -hmm. us about how that works out in giving. Mm -hmm. How are people giving mm -hmm. the gift of that yeah. person to that person's self, yeah. not just yourself mm -hmm. to them? Yeah. This is what I'm seeing, what I'm hearing. You know, this is who you, I, you might be. Yes, well, both sisters have served as mentors yes. for us at Given, so I'd love for you to yeah. share about that experience. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, I think, uh, first of all, the idea that at Given, you can be given the gift of, of who you are, mm -hmm. and there's a sense in which a friend can do that for you, can reflect to you right. who you are, right. and so there's the, the coming together at the forum that is a beginning mm -hmm. of that mentor mm -hmm. relationship where the women can see other women giving a gift and then start to see a reflection of themselves. Oh, they're here because they want to give and actually I'm here for the same reason. I want to give myself. And the women have an opportunity both in the in the small group. So we have we meet with the same women throughout the conference and then are able to walk with a few of them mm -hmm. after the conference. Um, not only to talk about action plans, but also to be a, a support mm -hmm. as a woman continues to deepen her faith life. Mm -hmm. Well, we're just about out of time, believe it or not. So, Rachel, give an yes. invitation for people to consider, women to consider joining you in D.C. Yes, please go on our website, giveninstitute.com. Women ages 21 to 30 are invited to apply. We also are open for mentors who are lay leaders as well as women religious, and the application for mentors is also on our website. We would just love for all women across the country to learn more about us and to become involved. Thank you so Thank very, you. very Thank much. You. We'll be right back. There's plenty more to come. Be encouraged. Don't go away. Well, Father Joseph joins us again today on today's show. But first, we're going to go straight to Rome to hear from Joan Lewis. Now, Joan, happy St. Valentine's Day to you. Well, hi, Jim and Joy, and happy Valentine's Day to everyone. You know, this is a day when people, of course, make gifts of chocolate and flowers and cards with flowery greetings, and we honor a saint, but how much do we know about the saint whose name we celebrate today, St. Valentine? Actually, if you look at the early martyrologies of the church, there were three saints who died at the end of the third century, the second half of the third century. One of them was a priest from Rome, we know a little bit about him, and another was the Bishop of Terni, which isn't really very far from Rome. And he's the one we're gonna focus on today. Now, other Valentine's uh, saints have been added o over the years, but we're gonna focus on, on Terni, and I'll tell you why. Now, exactly six years ago today, February 14, 2014, Pope Francis held an event in St. Peter's Square, and there were 20,000 young people, 10,000 couples all engaged to be married from Italy and from all over the world. Now, Archbishop Vincenzo Paglia, who headed the then Pontifical Council for the Family, he was telling the Pope that it was actually, with his studies and research, it was the Bishop of Terni, his, whose name was Valentine, for whom we have this feast day named St. Valentine's Day. Now, he was martyred in the year 273, but I have to tell you that the citizens of Terni, they knew about him for decades, for centuries, excuse me, and in 1644, the people of Terni named Valentine not only their patron saint, but named him the patron of lovers. Now, why would that be? Why would they think of this? Well, actually, it comes from a legend that comes from, that originated in Anglo-Saxon countries. And it seems that Bishop Valentine of Terni, whenever he would have people to his house, especially if there were young people, he would go out into his garden and he would pick flowers and he would give them to the young people. Now, on one occasion, two young people met. 
they married. Their marriage was so blissful and beautiful and satisfying that the bishop decided maybe it's time to dedicate one day a year to the benediction of the state of matrimony. So that, of course, is February 14th. Now, legend or fact, I don't know, but it's a great story. But I do know that the first Valentine Day was in 496. Do you think they had chocolate? Back to you. <laughs> Joan, thanks so much for your precious sharing and making St. Valentine's Day even more special for us. Thank you. Father, what do you got for us today? Well, as you well know, January 22nd is a day when the whole church in the United States prays for the dignity of human life to be recognized. And so we thought three years ago, let's bring in some children, let's bring in some young people to sing on that day for our televised mass. And because I remember what Pope St. John Paul II said one time, children had come to sing for him. And he said, well, Augustine says that when you sing, you pray twice, but when children sing, they pray three times. Wow. You know? So we don't, we're moved, right, when we hear yeah. young people and children and just this cause. So uh, one of our choir members, Dr. Timothy Banks, he wrote a beautiful piece based on Psalm 139. Mm -hmm which is, you are wonderfully made. So we had that debut for that performance on Janu uh, January 22nd. You can actually find it on EWTN's okay. Facebook uh, site for January 23rd. So let's take a look at that mm -hmm. now. Let's do it. So I couldn't Beautiful. help but think, you know, that the first pillar is about receive the gift you are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's really what this Psalm 139 is about, what this song is about, yeah. how we cherish children. Children are to be cherished yes. to receive the gift that you are. Mm -hmm. So many people, I think, have kind of lost that sense of their own dignity. And they have a sense that, well, if I don't look right, or I don't sound right, or I'm not popular, or I don't have the right things, I, I don't have any dignity. And that, nothing could be further from the truth. And that's really what this it's beautiful. This is trying to get it's across. beautifully mm -hmm. done. Their voices are beautiful, but the, the Holy Spirit radiating through their eyes mm -hmm. and through their faces. We see this again and again with, uh, with the choir here at EWTN. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's where it all begins, doesn't it? Because that's an objective truth. Your dignity, worth, and value mm -hmm. has been given to you from God. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. If we could believe that and be yeah. at home at that address. Really I will often that. say to people, 1 John chapter 4, verse 16, we have come to know and to believe in the love God has for us. Mm -hmm. John wrote that. Do you believe, you know, that God loves you, that he knows you, that mm -hmm. even before you were born, mm -hmm. he knew you and he formed you mm -hmm. and Amen, he treasured Father. you? Give us a prayer and a blessing, please. Father, we thank you that we are fearfully, wonderfully made. Help us all and everyone who is watching and connected with the Given Institute to receive the gift they are, that you have, uh, you treasure us, you hold us in existence, you prepared a life of glory for us. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks so much for joining us today, for being a part of the family. And remember that you're always at home with Jim 
and with joy. Oh, how much God loves you. And he's given you a way to spread that love to others. Bye now.